12 binders dropped off. Yes. They're all the documents that um, we've sent over have been filed with the court or they're part of the public record. Um, and both parties have asked for judicial notice. My understanding is that this was going to be an evidentiary hearing today. And um, for, for convenience in, in dealing with an evidentiary hearing by Blue Jeans, um, I felt it would be easier to just submit as if I were in court. I would just simply hand the eight or ten documents that, that we intended on covering. So that was my only intent, Your Honor, is to um, send those to opposing counsel and copy um, your JEA on that. So my apologies if that protocol was not correct. We did, we did reach out at the beginning of the week to try to understand the protocol, and I also reached out to counsel uh, last night um, saying that uh, my client, when she was pro se, submitted a bunch of documents, filed them, but some of them were in hyperlinks, and I know Your Honor received a bunch of binders. So I wasn't sure if they had received those or not, so I reached out to confirm that. And, um, and the only I got an indication um, from, from Scott uh, Lackman's associate or part, the partner of their firm, and she, she indicated to me by email that they were prepared to go forward despite the fact that they had not received the same binders that you had received, Your Honor, and I have not heard back um, from um, Mr. Scow. So that's that's my explanation there. Okay. Um, to the extent that the court had received those binders, the, the, everything has been reviewed. But this was not set for an evidentiary hearing. This was set as a motion for summary judgment and motions to dismiss. So if the parties want an evidentiary hearing on this, then we need to reset that. So before I go forward with the other case, speak now or forever hold your peace. I'm ready to rule on this today based on the motions that I received, but if the parties want an evidentiary hearing on this, then we need to set it on a date and time that I don't have my regular law in motion calendar and set it for an evidentiary hearing. Your Honor, uh, Mr. Thompson again, uh, uh, according to the record that I've reviewed and also the stipulation of the parties, um, it was my understanding that we were doing an evidentiary hearing and um, we have no problem continuing a week or two to have that make that happen. Mr. Scow, Mr. Lockman, would you like to weigh in? Yes, Your Honor, uh, Stephen Scott for Red Rock. Um, we did all agree on a date. It was actually uh, a little more painful than it should have been, but we've we prepared. We're here, Your Honor. We are we are prepared to argue, and I I don't think that we need to continue this matter any further. Mr. Lockman, Your Honor, Scott Lockman on behalf of Wells Fargo and Nation Star. I agree with Mr. Scout. Let's move forward with this hearing. Uh, all the all the parties have prepared, and uh, we're ready for uh, an adjudication. Okay. Um, that's fine. Like I said, I've got four pages worth of notes and I'm, I'm prepared to go forward. Um, I just wanted to make sure that if you all were wanting to do this as an evidentiary hearing, um, that was not what was listed on my calendar because if it would have been listed on my calendar as an evidentiary hearing, it would have been held on a Monday or a Friday or a Wednesday afternoon. So, so, Your Honor, if I may, Mr. Thompson here, I'm looking at the joint stipulation in order, and it does say evidentiary hearing, and I also looked at the court minutes. Um, I have them in the registry of action, and Your Honor continued the hearing before because of an evidentiary, because Your Honor wanted to have it heard. Uh, of course, I wasn't there, but I'm just going by the record and also the notice of entry of the stipulation and order filed on 727. And so that's, again, why um, we prepared to introduce testimony and to have that evidentiary hearing. And Your Honor, this is Stephen Scott for Red Rock. If I can interject, um, I was at the last hearing, and Ms. Tobin at that time was appearing for herself, and she had requested an evidentiary hearing. Um, she was the only one that requested it. I don't remember that we had any discussion with the other parties, but that was um, that was something that the court had allowed. And in the interim, she has now uh, hired counsel, 
and Mr. Thompson's familiar with this matter, and he has been involved with the prior matters involving the exact same claims with the exact same parties, um, which includes prior appeals. And I'm not, I'm not personally aware why we would need an evidentiary hearing on any of the matters uh, before you, Your Honor. Um, I suppose Mr. Thompson could explain that, but um, I, I know that before Your Honor is a motion to dismiss that my office filed and then the bank defendants, bank parties joined. Um, so again, I'm, I'm not even certain, I'm not clear, Your Honor, what an evidentiary hearing would be for. All right. Um, here's what I'm going to do. I'm just going to leave it on calendar. We can go ahead and argue it. Um, and I recognize that I did sign off on that order. Um, however, for whatever reason, Master Calendar in their infinite wisdom decided to list it as just a motion for summary judgment and motion to dismiss. Um, and so that's what I had it prepared for for today. But that's fine. We can move forward. I have reviewed everything, so we can move forward. But let me take the other case first. So thank you, gentlemen. Thank you, Your Honor. Thank you, Your Honor. Okay. Um, calling Trike Companies versus MM Development Company, Inc., 